Complete the table below. The first one has been done for you. For each statement, you must state if it's always true, sometimes true, or never true, giving a reason in each case. When a real value of x is substituted into x squared minus 6x plus 10, the result is positive. So first of all, we can see that x squared minus 6x plus 10 can be factorised. Um, and one way we can do this is using completing the square, where we take x and then half the number in front of x, which in this case is 6. So half of 6 is 3. Squared, take away uh, the number we just found, 3. Um, take away that number squared. So 3 squared is 9. And then we can add back on the 10, which will then simplify to x minus 3 squared plus 1. Now, any number squared is always positive, whether that number was negative or positive to begin with. Um, that squared will always be positive. That's just a general rule. And therefore, we can say that x minus 3 squared must always be greater than or equal to 0. Now, if we add 1 onto both sides, that means that x minus 3 squared plus 1 must always be greater than or equal to 1. Uh, which And 1 is a positive number, which means that this statement must be always true because any value of x will lead to a number greater than 1 and therefore is always positive. And this will get us two marks because we've shown that we know how to complete the square um, that gives us a first method mark, and then the answer mark for saying that this is a statement is always true will get us a second mark. So if ax is greater than b, then x must be greater than b over a. So first of all, we need to find out if this can ever be true. Um, so as an example, if a is greater than 0, so that a is a positive number, and ax is greater than b, Dividing both sides by a ends up with x is greater than b over a, which is exactly what they put in the statement. Uh, and this tells us that at least sometimes, if not always, this statement can be true. However, if we were to take a different, um, a different number, say a negative number, we need to see if this would remain the same, whether the statement would still be true. And so if we did look at if a was less than zero, so if a was negative, and we still had ax is greater than b. In an inequality, if we divide both sides by a negative number, it causes the inequality symbol to flip. So dividing both sides by a, which here is, is negative, would actually lead, leave us with x is less than than b over a, which is not what they've given us in this statement. This is the opposite. And so we can say that this statement is only sometimes true because if a is greater than zero, it is true. But when a becomes a negative number, this statement isn't true anymore because the inequality symbol flips. And you can try this as well um, with numbers. Um, if you put in certain numbers for a and b, where a is sometimes negative, um, you can see that x becomes less than b over a instead of greater than. And this would give us both marks because we've stated that it's only sometimes true for the answer mark. And for the method mark, we've shown why. We've shown a case where it may not always be true, which is when a is negative. The difference between consecutive square numbers is odd. So first of all, uh, as a, a general formula, if you like, for a square number, if we use n, then the square number would be n squared. And then the consecutive square number to this must just be n plus 1 squared. That's the next number along. So if n was 5, n plus 1 would be 6, and we'd have 5 squared, then 6 squared, because these are consecutive numbers. Now, the difference between them obviously can be written is the greater number, which would be n plus 1 squared, and then take away the smaller square number, which is n squared. Now, if we expand out the brackets of n plus 1 squared, we end up with n squared plus 2n plus 1, and then the minus n squared from the first square number we can add in. And now the 
n squared here and then minus n squared on the end um, both cancel out. And so we're left with 2n plus 1. Now, the expression for any odd number can be written as 2n plus 1 because 2n is, a num is an even number because any number um, multiplied by 2 is even as a general rule and therefore any even number plus 1 must be an odd number. And so since 2n plus 1 is the expression for an odd number, that means that the difference between consecutive square numbers must always be odd because we always end up with something that can be written as 2n plus 1. And so the answer would be always true as this is the formula for odd numbers. And this would get us both marks um, as we have stated that it's always true and then we've found out that the difference between these two numbers always gives us 2n plus 1 and we've shown that we know that this is the expression for an odd number.